Elemental Sounds Masterclass number three. We're going to focus today on the Portuguese nasal vowels. A few things to consider before we get deep into these nasal vowels. Nasal consonants are just humming. So in the third lecture, we're going to get into consonants. You'll figure out the features and how we define consonants. Uh, so we have a set called the nasal consonants, like m, n. These are nasal consonants. If you think about it, do m in slow motion. What are you doing? You're just humming. You say m, m, right? Without the a in between, you just have m, 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 m. That's just humming. Um, and then same with the n, 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 n. n. The only difference between M and N is what happens when you open up that oral passageway for the vowel. It sounds slightly different opening with your lips, m, versus opening with your tongue, n. All right, but neither here nor there for today's lecture. Just want to make that clear. Now, in English and other languages as well, we sometimes replace nasal consonants with nasal vowels. For example, I can say man, right? I say man can, and I say m, a, n, but Try saying the word man without um, without uh, using your tongue at all. So the, the final elemental sound is the letter N, 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 which is made, it's called the alveolar nasal, using the tip of the tongue to the alveolar ridge, man. Try to say man without moving your tongue. And you, you would sound like this, man, man, man. So people will understand you. You just say, oh, I know a man who does this, right? So how do they understand you? Why? Because what you're actually doing is you're nasalizing that vowel. So the actual is actually two elemental sounds, m, a, me, me, two elemental sounds. And uh, what's going on is remember what I said to you earlier, uh plus hmm equals uh, right? Use that same that same equation if I uh, if I subtract if I subtract the the consonant sound, I just have huh. Eh, What's going on with your ear is the person listening is still hearing the nasal sound and the, the feeling of nasal vibration. And as a result, he's putting that end sound there. We're, we're kind of hearing it even though it's not actually there. So um, these nasal sounds can kind of blend together. Same for can. I can say can, can, or when, when, when. It might not sound proper, but people will understand me properly if I say when, when can, man, right? They can understand. Um, so, all I have to say that even if you speak very articulately with these nasal things, you too will nasalize uh, vowels all the time whenever you have like a nasal consonant after a vowel, which means nasal vowels shouldn't be entirely new to you. You do them naturally without realizing them. So, the English ear will misperceive nasal vowels as oral vowels plus nasal consonants. Okay, so as we said to you before, when I say man can, I'm already having this kind of confusion as an English speaker between nasal vowels and nasal consonants, which means when I come to Portuguese, where there is, there should not be confusion, there's two different things, then um, you'll, an English person or American or British person will start to misperceive Portuguese words uh, that have oral vowels um, as having nasal consonants because they'll hear the nasality and then their mind would be like, oh, nasal sound, that must be a nasal consonant what I'm familiar with. So instead of saying a word like thumbang, thumbang, and thumbang, even though it's spelled with the letter M, there's no M elemental sound. The elemental sound of M is called a bilabial nasal. So m, m. If you see someone say thumbang, like in slow motion, they never say m. They say thumbang, thumbang, thumbang. Okay? But uh, how would an American say with a strong accent, he say, Tam bam, right? Tam bam, or tam bam, right? And they'll say tam bam. What they're doing is oral vowel, a, ta, m, ta, m, a, m. But it should be th, bang, all right? So hopefully that makes sense to you. You want to be able to differentiate between nasal consonants, which you're naturally used to as an English speaker, and nasal vowels, which might be a bit trickier for you, all right? Uh, and one more thing just to be clear about. Um, I said to you in the last slide that, like, you know, when you block the nose completely, it's mouth only. Actually, it's not true. It's kind of a, it's a continuum with nasality, meaning um, when you speak, oral vowels aren't necessarily 100% oral airflow. So when I say ha, it's not 100% of the air is coming out of my mouth. Maybe like 90% is. Some is still getting through my nose. Um, and that's why someone can sound more nasally than another person. So when someone's like, 
you know, think about Steve Urkel. He's like, did I do that? Right? He's nasalizing his vowels a lot more, meaning he's letting more air flow out of the nose. Someone had asked in a different webinar, like, oh, I, I sound a bit nasally. You know, a lot of places, um, you know, sound having a nasally voice might not be desirable for someone. So people want to work on making um, sounding less nasally. This will help you because you're now having more awareness of what's causing that. And um, you can start to direct more of the airflow through the mouth, which creates a more, you know, resonant uh, uh sound as opposed to a uh, uh kind of sound. Okay. So just a couple things to consider before we move on to the details. Now, what is actually, who's the culprit here? What is causing this nasality change? And it's this thing called the velum or the soft palate. Now, if you take uh, your finger, hopefully you've washed it, and um, put it in your mouth and Feel the top of your mouth, the, the ridgy hard part, the part that gets burnt when you drink hot coffee or eat a hot pizza. That part right there is called the hard palate. Now, if you keep sticking your finger back and like slowly glide your finger back, but don't go too fast, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll gag. Um, you'll get to a thing called the soft palate. And you'll know it's a soft palate because all of a sudden it gets soft. There's no bone there. The hard palate has a bone there. Soft palate, the bone goes away and it's just kind of soft tissue. So... You can go back and you feel that eventually there's a, there's a, there's a main, major change. That's the soft palate, okay? Now, the soft palate is like a, it's a, um, it's soft tissue. What it actually is is like a bunch of like muscle fibers covered in like a mucous membrane or whatever. Um, and because there's muscles there, you can control it. Um, so we use the soft palate all the time unconsciously. We use it when we swallow. Um, so we swallow and that makes sure that like, you know, milk doesn't come out of our nose when we, when we laugh and stuff. We also do when we sneeze. It protects our nasal passage when we sneeze. We, we, we elevate it, contract it, and close it so that some of the uh, stuff comes out of the mouth and protects the kind of you know explosion of stuff coming up into your nasal passage. Um, and uh, during oral vowel articulation, when I say I, E, U, A, O, I'm actually retracting and elevating this uh, velum, this soft palate, to block off the nasal passage. So we use it all the time because when we speak English, almost all of our vowels, like we said, are oral vowels. So without realizing it, I'm contracting and you're contracting in these muscles here in the velum when you speak. So uh, you are constantly retracting and elevating the velum when you speak. Uh, however, be aware that in the default resting position, this nasal passage is open. The velum is just chilling here. In this diagram right now, you see that green thing is the velum. Right now, it's in a resting position. Um, you know what that feels like if you just close your mouth and breathe through your nose like this. That feeling of relaxation you have there, that's the feeling of your velum being relaxed. Like you're, you're not doing anything. And then therefore, air can pass freely. When you speak, you're doing something. So you're, you're moving away from default. Therefore, the key to nasal vowel articulation is relaxation. And this is very important because I see people who are trying to learn nasal vowels and they're like, and they're trying to do something. They're trying to like squeeze something, feel something, like, and they can't get the sound out because they're trying too hard. The key is relaxing. You're, 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 right now I'm speaking, I'm doing stuff to retract the velum. When I speak, if I just go, uh, this is a relaxed position. I'm just letting the air pass through. So the key is relaxing. The, ch the reason why it's challenging at first is because you're not used to relaxing that when you speak. Okay? So remember that. Relaxation. Now, let's talk about nasal oral alternation. So we already went over uh, the oral vowels of Portuguese in our, last, in our last webinar. And now we're dealing with these nasal ones, right? Which means that when we speak... We're constantly alternating between nasal vowels and oral vowels, right? So, for example, in the Portuguese sentence, O vento está sempre assim. O vento está sempre assim. All right? I'm alternating several times. First, I say o. That's an oral vowel. If you look at that diagram, you can see that green thing is elevated and retracted. That's my velum blocking nasal passage airflow. And now I have an oral vowel, o. But then the next syllable, vem, vem. Now I'm relaxing. So between U and VAM, there is a movement of my, um, my there's a relaxation in my velum. U VAM. But then immediately I'm putting it right back up. U VAM TU. Immediately I'm retracting it again for the oral vowel. Next one's also for TA. But then I relax it again. SEN. 
Then I retract it back again. Pri. A. Sin. So in that case, we go how many times? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So in that sentence, I'm having five movements or alternations of my, um, of my velum. All right? And the challenge then it, for you as a Portuguese learner and speaking Portuguese is being able to alternate between nasal and oral vowels with precision. So you're hitting the right vowels at the right time. Speed, because you're going to be speaking fast. You're going to be saying these things back and forth. Your velum is going like this all the time. And ease. So, you know, like I said to you before in the, in the review, when you first do this, you will have soreness specifically in your velum because when you speak, think about it in English, you're just kind of keeping your velum there in the oral position the whole time. Now, all of a sudden in Portuguese, you got this thing working back and forth every, every like, you know, five times a second. So that's going to be a challenge. That's going to be a physical challenge for you. All right. So therefore, there's a, the natural learning progression. This is the same learning progression we do in all all of our language learning courses, every concept you have, there's always this pro progression we do. First, you have to conceptualize it, look at these diagrams, understanding what's actually going on, like in theory, when you speak. Then you want to develop your ability to hear it, um, so you can hear the difference between oral articulation and nasal articulation. Your ear can then be your coach, your feedback guide for pronunciation, and actually having that physical awareness and the physical control. All right, now. To be more specific, what our development plan is going to be, our, our, our plan of attack. First, we need to focus on awareness and developing an awareness of vibration in the nasal cavity. What does that feel like? Isolate that feeling so you're very aware. Then we need to develop an awareness of movement of the velum when it's going up and down like this. What's, um, you know, what isolating that movement, the same way we isolated the movement of a tongue in the last webinar. And then we need to develop an awareness of these nasal oral vowel pairs that we'll get into. And these are, these are sounds that um, exact same tongue position, but in one case, it's a nasal vowel, and the other, it's an oral vowel. Then we need to develop a control. And um, we want to control our nasal vowel pronunciation. So you'll find, <clears throat> you'll discover in this webinar what the nasal vowels are in Portuguese. So you won't be able to hit those with precision and like have the control of your tongue and your velum to hit those sounds correctly. Uh, then once you have that control of the pronunciation, we need control of the alternation. And that's the trickiest part, like I said. You know, first you're able to get the sounds individually, but then be able to get them and then relax, go back again, relax, blah, 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 back and forth in a, uh, in a speech is going to be your final challenge. Uh, so first thing we're going to do. So in this rest of this webinar, basically, I'm going to be doing a bunch of this kind of drills. Follow along back home. Don't worry if you don't get it right away. This is the uh, first time you're doing it, but we're recording this right now, so you can go back to these recordings whenever you want. Nasal vibration awareness, okay? So you see in this diagram, you have this thing called the nasal cavity. This is kind of this big gaping hole in the middle of your head, and um, when you let air flow pass through there, it starts to just kind of bounce around and vibrate in there. So you want to have an awareness of that vibration, because if you feel that vibration, then you know you're doing nasalization, right? So how do we do this? Very simple. What I want you to do, um, first, close your mouth and then hum. <laughs> All right. While you do that, feel the vibration in this part of your face, this front part, this mask of your face. All right. If you have trouble feeling it, what you can do is uh, pinch your nose and then put air out through your mouth like this. Uh, now you should feel it a lot more. Uh, if you make that sound. Uh, you should feel it in your fingers vibrating at the blockage here. Now, why do you feel it more there? Because what's going on is the air is now going through into your nose. Sorry, into your nasal cavity, uh, getting blocked at the nose, coming right back around, and then going out of your mouth. So the air needs to leave. If you, if you close your mouth and try to do that, try to hum while you close your mouth. And you, or you pinch your nose like this, nothing happens. You can't make any noise. You just, you just get full of air, and your ears pop, and then you're you're done, right? Um, so if you open your mouth, you have this vibration. So you want to do that, and then you want to isolate that feeling and become aware of nasal vibration because if you're doing a nasal vowel in Portuguese, you should be feeling a nasal vibration if you're doing it right. Hing, sing, I sing. I sing. Right now I say vento. I sing. 
at that moment I'm saying those vowels, I can feel my nasal cavity vibrating. All right. Now, um, the next thing you want to develop in the movie, and once again, go through these at your own pace later, and don't move on until you've, these, uh, I built these things out in a progression, starting with the most simple and you build upon it. So do these things in order, but right now I'm just giving you exposure so you know what to, have, what to expect. Valor movement awareness, okay? Now, like I said to you before, we're constantly using moving, contracting, elevating this velum whenever we speak, whenever we sneeze, whenever we swallow, and therefore it's an unconscious movement. Now we gotta move this feeling into the realm of, you know, conscience, right? Conscious. So um, relax velum is, is just chilling like this. So I breathe like this. Take a moment to breathe through your nose and then notice that strain you have. Like say la 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 la. La 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 la. What are you doing? When you do that, become aware of there is some kind of tension whenever you said ah, ah. There is a tension there and then when you breathe through your nose, you feel relaxed. That tension goes away. What is that tension you're feeling? That is a tension of your na of your velum. So you say, ah, uh, ah, uh, that movement is your velum relaxing, okay? Um, then, um, so yes, this, this is the velar movement. Now, the, other, the next drill you can do to develop your awareness of this velar movement is to pinch your nose, and you might have trouble with this the first time, but fool around with it. Pinch your nose, and like I said, when I'm talking right now, I have this kind of, you know, smurf voice or whatever. Um, that's the sound of like air, once again, vibrating a lot in my nasal cavity because my nose is pinched. Try to do this. I want you to um, make this sound. Then I want you to go to an oral vowel so you don't have that nasal vibration. It will sound like this. All right, try to do that. Do it slow if, it's, if that's too fast for you. Okay, so first, conceptually, what's going on? When I do that, first I have this, I'm having air pass through the nose, create that weird kind of vibration, but then um, I'm relaxing, right? I'm sorry, I'm I'm flexing the velum. That's in the right diagram. I'm flexing the velum, blocking off airflow through the nasal cavity and letting it pass through my mouth only. So it sounds like a normal thing. Uh 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 uh, uh. If you do this in the mirror, you should be able to and you and you have like light coming into your mouth, you should be able to see your your soft palate moving and contracting and once again when you see it yourself it has a huge effect on your brain because you're like oh wow that is what's going on in my body same way i can see my hands so i encourage you to do that um but do that and develop that physical awareness uh, 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 uh. also when you do this you want to isolate the movement don't move your tongue all right don't let your tongue go back and forth like that uh, 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 uh. Whatever feeling you're having is the feeling of your velum. It's the only thing moving in my mouth right now when I alternate between these sounds. M make a note, make a mental note. This is the feeling of my velum. This is what's gonna be at play now when you go into these Portuguese vowels. So to review then, uh, we have the um, fixed oral vowels, which this is from last webinar. We have the E, A, A, O, U, E, E, O, E, E. These are our fixed position oral vowels. We also covered the moving oral vowels, which are I, ui, e, oi, oi, au, eu, el, eu, o, au, u. Then we had the fixed nasal vowels of e, e, uh, e, 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 o, u. And the moving nasal vowels of e, o, oi, e. So these are all of the Portuguese vowels. These are half the elemental sounds here, we have the consonants and the vowels. Now all the elemental sounds are here. It's pretty crazy, right? Because if you think about it, you only have five letters, A, E, I, O, U, right? But we have in total now, if you count these all up, 31 vowels in Brazilian Portuguese, all right? 31 elemental sounds that are vowels that you need to master and hear each and every one of these. 
to be able to accurately converge on the pronunciation of Brazilian speakers. So you're going to go through these um, exercises and listen to these audio files and try to identify it. And what you want to do is make note, which of these 31 are you having trouble with? Which one are you nailing perfectly? You confirm it with your um, Brazilian friend, you do it, and they all sound perfect or whatever. Which ones are you um, struggling with? Make note of that, write that down, and then focus all your energy and attention on getting that sound. Use the concept to understand, like, what am I doing wrong? Is the vowel sound? There's only three ways to mess up a vowel. Tongue position, lip roundedness, and nasality. So you ask yourself the question, is this not being nasalized enough? Then that means that I'm not relaxing my velum enough. Or you're saying, is my tongue too low on this? Is my tongue too front on this? So now you have the framework to kind of auto-correct your uh, pronunciation.